My name is Jolivan Wam and I'm a Singaporean. I'm based in Singapore and I've been working on migrant worker rights issues, LGBT issues and freedom of expression for the last 16 years. Well, I think the UDHR is an aspirational document, so it has provided a standard for um, not just governments but also civil society and the community at large um, in terms of how we should treat um, fellow human beings and also the kinds of um, the kind of society that we want to create. It has been very useful as an advocacy tool. Um, to pressure governments and also to educate people about what human dignity is and the inherent rights that all human beings have. The UDHR is, is something which um, many governments, especially governments in Southeast Asia, don't take seriously. For instance, ASEAN has an Intergovernmental Commission for Human Rights, yeah, but it is also it's a commission that's quite toothless and is unable to do much to hold governments accountable for human rights violations and abuses. So um, the Universal Declaration is useful in that many of the um, human rights conventions, such as um, the Convention for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women or the Convention for the Rights of the Child, the, they're all based on the UEDHR, which is a core document. There are many Southeast Asian countries that have ratified these human rights conventions and this um, helps us to hold the government accountable for their human rights record um, on the various um, treaties that they have ratified. So civil society has found that to be quite useful in terms of um, pressuring and holding governments accountable for um, human rights violations. The work that we do in relation to migrants, because we um, provide a lot of assistance and we do casework for migrant workers, so when they, when they approach um, organ, uh, migrant rights organisations for assistance, um, usually it's for employment related problems or, or, or problems that they are, they are they're facing with their recruiters, their recruitment agents. So a lot of the work that's being done on the ground um, is done through the framework of the UDHR. Yeah, it is a rights-based framework. Migrant workers are not um, voters in the countries that they go to work in. So they lack political power. So this makes it very difficult for their interests and their priorities to be taken seriously. Yeah, so, and that's why the work of human rights defenders and NGOs on migrant workers is so important because they don't have a political voice. And NGOs um, and human rights defenders working on these issues are the only ones who will be able to bring their issues um, to the spotlight. So that's why their work needs to be supported. Um, you, the UDHR principles definitely have relevance, um, but what's preventing the realisation of these rights is the lack of political will. And for ASEAN in particular, there is a general principle of non-interference. Yeah, so, so because of that, it is difficult to make any progress on migrant rights in the region because each country um, doesn't want to interfere with another country's um, human rights record. So, so because there's no consensus, um, migrant, the migrant rights situation um, tends to be stuck at a, at, at a level where um, people are just talking about it uh, instead of um, realising these rights and ensuring that the well-being and the life, the quality of life of the migrants themselves improve. One of the articles of the UDHR is the right to fair and just conditions at work. So this is very relevant to uh, my work on migrant rights activism because many migrant workers in Singapore are abused and exploited and do not receive sufficient government protection. Domestic workers, for instance, they don't have the right to uh, limits to their working hours, um, their rights to day off, to days off are regularly curtailed and they are abused, verbally abused, psychologically abused, sexually, physically abused and many of them are also socially isolated and cannot leave the house. So um, governments around in, in Singapore and also in, in the sending countries are not doing enough to protect these women, especially since they, they provide um, valuable remittances to their countries back home and also contribute so much to the families of receiving countries like Singapore. Yeah, so um, a lot of our advocacy and our campaign is based on this concept of the right to just and favourable conditions at work. So in this sense, the UDHR is um, relevant for um, 
migrant rights activism? Yeah. Well, I think the power lies in the hands of ordinary citizens. So the only way in which we can realise um, the ideals of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is to continue to speak up, um, speak out, um, and join social movements, um, join NGOs, and continue to be part of um, the human rights community. Yeah, because it's only when we speak out and create this space for ourselves that governments will listen to us.